Imagine a mighty river that has been the lifeline of an entire region for thousands of years suddenly drying up. This is exactly what happened to the Euphrates, one of the most important rivers in world history. And what was found after the Euphrates dried up shocked scientists. The discovery shed a whole new light on our past and challenged some of our previous assumptions about world history. The Euphrates stretches an impressive length of around 2,800 kilometers and flows through countries such as Turkey, Syria, and Iraq before joining the Tigris in the south of Iraq and flowing into the Persian Gulf. Together with the Tigris, the Euphrates shaped the region we know today as Mesopotamia and the Cradle of Civilization. Consider for a moment how this river played a crucial role in the development of several ancient civilizations the enigmatic empire of the Sumerians, the Akkadians, the biblical Babylonians, Assyrians, and Persians lived on and from this river. Historic cities such as Uruk, Babylon, and Mari were located on its banks and benefited from its fertile floodplain. The Euphrates was not only a source of water and a lifeline for agriculture, but also an important transportation route that facilitated trade and communication between different regions. Today, the catchment area of the Euphrates still covers an area of around 500,000 square kilometers. The river carries an average of around 356 cubic meters of water per second, although the amount of water can fluctuate depending on the season and weather conditions. The Euphrates is also known for its dams. One of the largest is the Aturk Dam in Turkey. And it is precisely this dam that could play a role in the apocalyptic prophecy in which the Euphrates is the river of destiny for mankind. A river is disappearing. It is alarming that the Euphrates has been drying up faster and faster in recent years. Experts attribute this phenomenon to a combination of climate change and regional geopolitical factors. The omnipresent climate change is leading to changes in precipitation and rising temperatures, which is already having a massive impact on water availability in the region. At the same time, the intensive use of river water for irrigation purposes and agriculture has meant that there is hardly any water flowing into the region. The people on the Euphrates are at a loss and some are also angry. This is because the declining water flow is not only due to natural phenomenon, in the opinion of many people on the lower reaches of the river, the gigantic dams built by the Turks are also to blame. All these factors together have led to an unprecedented reduction in the water levels in the Euphrates and to political tension on the ground that should not be underestimated. In the countries along the Euphrates, people are now remembering an unpleasant prophecy from the Bible, according to which the drying up the Euphrates will bring about evil. Was the Bible right? It sounds strange, but the oldest parts of the Bible were probably written around 3,000 years ago. Can you imagine how incredibly long ago that was? Back then, prophets claimed to have heard from God that their lifeline, the Euphrates, would one day dry up. This was certainly hard to imagine for the people of the time, but experts agree that the Euphrates carried far more water back then, and Mesopotamia was one of the most fertile regions in the whole of the Near East. Let us remember for a moment that the Euphrates not only appears in the context of a hellish prophecy. Together with the Tigris and two other unknown rivers, it also formed a region that is described in the Bible as the Garden of Eden, and thus the cradle of biblical humanity. The Euphrates is therefore truly a river of destiny. Is this where all life on earth is said to have begun, and will it end there? In the book of Revelation in the New Testament, the drying up of the Euphrates is described as a significant sign of the end times. In Revelation 16.12, it is prophesied that the sixth angel will pour out his bowl on the great river of Euphrates and its waters dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. This drying up of the Euphrates is often interpreted as a harbinger of the gathering of the armies of the world for the battle of Armageddon. In the Christian tradition, this battle is seen as a decisive conflict between the forces of good and evil and the last battle before the last judgment. This prophecy has led to much interpretation and speculation over the centuries and it is believed that the author of the text, John the Evangelist, was inspired by much older texts and traditions, probably dating back to Sumerian culture. Now we have to ask ourselves, do texts such as those in the Bible really only have symbolic and metaphorical meaning, 
or do current geopolitical tensions point to an approaching Armageddon? The Kings of the Rising Sun, mentioned in Revelation as the enemies of good, have often been interpreted as a reference to an army from the East. We live in a time in which the battle between West and East is far from over. Conflicts are currently breaking out again in the Middle East, and it seems as if the religious problems are not coming to rest either. But can this really be linked to the drying up of a river? What does the Epic of Giglamesh know? Did you know that most biblical texts date back to the Sumerians? Many of the Old Testament accounts are contained in the traditions of this culture in a slightly different form. That is why many historians today look to the writings and legends of these people for further clues as to what might be meant by prophecies such as Revelation and others. Are they pure fantasy? Did the authors just want to frighten people or warn them? Or is there some truth in these texts? Prophecies and ancient texts, such as the Epic of Giglamesh, still fascinate us today. The story of Giglamesh is probably one of the oldest literary works in the world, and the Euphrates is also mentioned in several passages. In the epic, which is set in the region of Mesopotamia, the river is a sacred lifeline and is portrayed as having a power or magic of its own. One of the most notable mentions of the Euphrates in the Epic of Giglamesh is the story of Giglamesh and Enkidu's journey to the cedar forest. There, they went to fight the dark demon Humbaba. Before their departure, the two performed rituals on the banks of the Euphrates to ask for protection and success for their dangerous mission. They washed themselves in the Euphrates as a symbol of purification and in preparation for their upcoming battle. The Euphrates is depicted in the epic as a powerful and important river. It was the source of life for the Sumerians and of great importance for the spiritual and ritual life of its people. In the epic, Giglamesh and Enkidus kill the dark guardian of the cedar forest and get themselves into big trouble with the gods. The gods send the Bull of Heaven to punish Giglamesh and Enkidu, and although the two heroes also defeat this creature, this leads to the death of Enkidu, which plunges Giglamesh into deep grief. So, we do not find a direct connection to the biblical prophecy here, although the epic about Humbaba, the guardian of the cedar forest, is sometimes interpreted as an unnecessary battle of man against the forces of nature. Do we also fight against the forces of nature when we try to prevent the river from drying up? Or do people anger the gods when dams prevent the flow of water? Today, we generally no longer believe in gods or in the fate that can be determined by a river. Even most religions today relegate such things to the realm of superstition. Even the ancient biblical prophecy of the end of the world is seen by modern religious scholars as a metaphor and a symbolic story. Where worlds pass away, other worlds often arise, and so strange things also happen on the dry Euphrates. Shocking Finds in the Dry Riverbed With the receding waters of Lake Assad in Syria, a long-lost ancient settlement has been uncovered. The site of Morabet probably dates back to the Neolithic era. For thousands of years, this site has disappeared into the lake and today it reappeared as a unique testimony to a bygone era. This discovery is particularly significant because it sheds light on the beginnings of agriculture for all of humanity. It is believed that our ancestors first began growing plants and cultivating fields here thousands of years ago, marking a decisive turning point in our history. The transition from a nomadic to a sedentary lifestyle is still a little researched point in history. Scientists are still trying to answer the question of why people suddenly had the idea of modifying and cultivating plants or breeding animals, and where they got this knowledge from. Interestingly, Morabe also shows evidence of a special veneration of women as beneficial beings or even goddesses. This suggests that women held positions of power and enjoyed great respect in this ancient civilization. The whole region along with the Euphrates and Tigris rivers is truly a paradise for archaeologists and scientists trying to unravel the mysteries of mankind's development. On the banks of the Tigris and very close to its brother river, the Euphrates, lies the ancient city of Nineveh. Nineveh was the mighty capital of the Assyrian Empire. The remains of this city, including large palaces, high temples, and extensive libraries, still bear witness to an unusually advanced civilization. Presumably, our entire civilization, 
our accounting system, our administrative systems, large parts of mathematics, and many other achievements of human culture can be traced back to these ancient centers in Mesopotamia. Also on the Tigris are the remains of Tel Brak, a flourishing metropolis during the early dynastic period of Mesopotamia. Traces of the first forms of writing on clay tablets can be found in its ruins. Today, these finds provide unique insights into the development of human communication. Remains of agricultural facilities show the skill in irrigation and agriculture. To this day, it is considered a miracle how people in the region learned these skills. All these archaeological sites are now regarded as the cradle of modern civilization. But this heritage is now facing new challenges. Without the protection of water, they are vulnerable to decay, erosion, and damage from the harsh desert climate. Fine carvings, intricate details, and valuable artifacts are at risk. Dedicated archaeologists are working to recover and preserve these important testimonies to our culture. At the moment, we do not know what further consequences the ongoing drying up of the river Euphrates will bring. It is possible that other long-disappeared places will emerge, while others will disappear. Countries could come into conflict or come to a peaceful agreement. What is certain, however, is that this region has known fierce conflicts since the Euphrates was still rich in water and fertile. So blaming everything on the river and an ancient prophecy would certainly be a mistake. Subscribe now and look forward to many more interesting videos.